This is our incredible new studio, and this is what it used to look like. Foresight have swept in and done an amazing job. However, it's left us with a bit of a problem. With the studio being renovated, we've had a buildup of boxes full of clubs that we haven't tested yet. So not only are we going to be opening up literally dozens of boxes today, when we find something cool that I think you guys are going to like, we're also going to be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned. That is going to be popping up a little bit later in the video. Do you reckon we should rank these in like a bit of a cool wall as well? We're gonna rank them in a bit of a cool wall because that's a great idea. So first out of the boxes, we have some Wilson staff model putters. Hmm. I don't actually think I've ever used a Wilson staff. It's center shafted. Ah. Ooh. 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 You know what this is. So this is the staff model 8802. Some would call this a classic design and they would be right in doing so because it's been around since what the 1800s, <laughs> very much just a pure blade with milling on the back. That is, that is ice cold already. I've got a sneaky feeling, a suspicion, nay, an intuition that this is from Adele. Okay. Well, severe lack of packing in here. Um, okay. Odd thing I noticed about these Adele putters, Adele normally have a toe up system on their putters. So if you were dangling on the finger, the toe would point straight up like that. Now these are more of a conventional style by the looks of it. That, I mean, that is very nice. a very, very, very nice looking putter. But that is also, again, just a very classic design, not something they'd maybe associate with Adele. So these have all got Ari on them or Array. I think we did a proper English there. Weighting system, got an F1. So we've got basically all of these are mallet headed designs. I'm presuming, because it's got this in there. If we get in that, get in that. There we go, finally, right. So that is like that putter in its modular form. I've got my doubts whether this is worth it. If I'm being honest with you. Right, okay. So that is off there. And I'm going to do this crazy thing where I now stick this on there. Absolutely not worth it. <laughs> in my arm, in my, in my arm. Right, so we've got some Odyssey putters. Now, these are the AI1 and the AI1 milled. The milled ones are a little bit more expensive. I'm pretty sure these putters are following the same storyline as the drivers. So the faces are AI controlled, different densities based on data collected from golfers on where they strike the putters. So let's whip some headcovers off. So straight away, that actually looks really nice. Okay, this is AI1 uh, number seven. I mean, like literally an absolute classic Odyssey design, the number seven. But if you have a look here, you see this like little window and it's literally a little window. We'll, we'll get some close-ups, but that is actually showing the face. So it's showing the internal structure and what's behind the hitting area here. And you can kind of see weird nodules and nubules and plubules that are all kind of like making the face all wavy. Oh, the, oh, 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 there we go. There you go, you can see, that's what's going on. So a window into what is happening with the putter face. Yeah, I'd actually like to test this in a two ball. And that is the one putter we don't have. We've got the entire AI range by the looks of it, apart from the one putter that I really want to test. That's annoying. So on the cool wall, we have categories from ice cold to cool to uncool to global warming. Now, first of all, that classic Wilson putter is just, <laughs> that's, Ice cold, everybody. Just in case you didn't know. Those Adele putters, uh, they're quite cool. I mean, the fiddliness of them kind of knocked them down a little bit. And that center shot. Okay, on to wedges. And first up, we have Tacomo Skyforger 001. And I have to say, that is an incredibly cool name for a wedge. They actually look like really shiny, almost too shiny. Kind of like shiny in a slightly cheap looking way. I'm not sure about that. Well, 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 we have a Vega wedge with, it's another modular club head design by the looks of it. Um, 
Mick was just saying in the box over there, there are some kind of interchangeable weights here. So this would screw out, change the weight, and I'm guessing change the bounce. It's got 50, 60 degree mid. Now, whenever anything says mid, that's normally talking about a bounce on a wedge. They actually look really cool. And I've got a feeling, an intuition, some would say, that we actually have some Vega irons as well. Right, next up in the wedges, we have the CBX4 from Cleveland. And oh my God, they are absolutely massive. Why are they so big? They're absolutely huge. Now, I'm pretty sure, nay, I'm positive in saying, that these are more of the forgiving wedge. I can say that with elite confidence because it has elite forgiveness whacked all over the sole. So they do different, I mean, Cleveland are a pretty renowned wedge company. I was testing out some of their wedges last year. For the first time in a long time, I was very, very impressed with how good they were. These are, ooh, nice little burnish finish there. These are gonna be more geared towards a higher handicap golfer who wants just a little bit more confidence around the greens. Right, I can see what these are, and I think these might be the first clubs we actually test today. Now, these are indie golf wedges. Now, I believe, you can tell me if I'm wrong, I believe these are the wedges that Rick has put in the bag to try and fix his short game. <laughs> we'll have a go and we'll see how good these are on the FSX Play software. Right, we get to play around with the Foresight software here as well. So I think we'll go test the Indie Golf Wedges. Now there is a short course on here, pitch and put. Let's load this bad boy up, shall we? Set up, yeah, weather, no wind. Let's go in the morning. I said no wind. Right, Indie Golf Wedges. I've heard pretty good things actually about this company. I think they're trying to do things in a slightly different fashion. I remember when Rick got his wedges, they came in like a guitar case rather than a box. Right, Indie Golf Wedges. Now I've heard some decent things about the company. It's quite a new startup. Oh my God, I hit a lot of balls last night and I think my back just broke. However, for a thin, it's not worked out too bad. Oh, that was, I almost missed it. Not a birdie though, 2.7. The first thing that springs to mind straight away when I'm holding them, the club head feels so heavy, like massively heavy. This is made of steel and, I don't know, mercury? Is that heavy? That's a heavy metal, isn't it? It's also liquid. It's also heavy metal. Iron, Iron lead, lead. Iron Maiden. <laughs> We've got this panda sloth on the back. I'm presuming it's 10 degrees of bounce on the bottom. The whole kind of design is very, it's very simple. There's not really much going on here. 91 yards, a little 54 degree. It's actually done remarkably well, considering my entire back feels like it's encased in concrete. I won't say, I won't say they feel the softest wedge I've ever hit in my life. Admittedly, that could be, I'm thin in the absolute arse off them. But yeah, I can't quite get over the weight. Might have to get these on the scales, you know. Might have been juicy. All right, 50 degree. This will be a little bit more of a test because when I strike a wedge, I like the feeling that the, the ball is taking off to a touch lower. So what a lot of modern wedge companies are doing, they're moving the CG in the head a little bit higher so we produce a little bit more of a lower ball flight, especially initially. What I tend to find is with a few wedge companies that the ball just takes out a little bit higher. It's kind of like a floaty flight. Obviously, it's a lot easier to test that on the course than in here. Well, I'm under 25 yard club. Okay, so we're gonna put those indie wedges into the giveaway from today's video. And you know what, I've got a feeling I'm just gonna be adding some more clubs in there as well. So this could turn out to be quite the prize. Now to enter the giveaway, let's keep this simple. You gotta be a subscriber to the channel. So if you haven't done that, make sure you do that now. We wanna be pushing over that 600K follower mark. Also like this video and get down into those comments below and let us know the favorite club that you see in today's video. Now, what we will do is we will reply to the comment of the winner in two weeks time. Please, please note that there are scammers active on YouTube. We will only tell you if you've won from this account, which is very easy to check. All you need to do 
is just click on whoever has commented and if this channel pops up with all the subscribers and all the rest of it, you will know it is genuine. Good luck, but we're also gonna be adding in some more clubs. So stay tuned. So there's nothing really ice cold within the wedge category. I think the Vega wedge looked pretty cool and I'm kind of starting to understand those indie wedges a little bit more. Those Cleveland wedges, even though I think they'd be really good, they're a little bit uncool. And Tacomo, bit too shiny, but they do have a cool name. Nah, they're uncool. First up in the irons, we have Vega and the Mizar Pro, Mizar? Mizar, Mizar Pro. Kind of looking like a bladed iron, more of a muscle bag. They've also got like a toe screw in here. So what a lot of companies are doing now, they're making their bladed irons and they're putting a tungsten toe screw in. I can't tell because I've not done a full chemical analysis yet, but I would presume that this is also a tungsten toe screw, which has gone into these clubs to expand that MOI and just to make them a little bit more forgiving. They look very, very clean, it has to be said, and not in a, I'm not taking any chunky divots with them yet, like a clean, concise design. Forged in Japan, which obviously gets my blood pumping. Okay, right. Um, what mystery? will be held within. They look like quite big irons and they are from our old friends at Sub70. The 699 Pros and, check that out. Got a logo on there. And then, look at that feral. That is lovely. Wow, that is like some strong feral game there. The 699 Pros. I mean, they look a little bit chunky, I'm not gonna lie. They're probably not built for me, more like a mid handicap type of game. Now we have tested, now I have tested sub 70 irons before and generally it's been really, really good. Now, oh, well, we've got our logo up here enough. Should we do these in the giveaway? Should we do these in the giveaway? I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a full set in here. Feels like that. So kind of like a five iron or a four iron, probably up to a wedge. Okay, so yeah, let's add these into the giveaway. So, so far, we have a set of Indie Golf wedges and we have a full set of irons from Sub70 with our logo on it. If you don't like that, that's fine. Just give them away to a family member who you kind of like. McGregor Blades, the MT86. Now these are actually, I feel a little bit guilty because I'm pretty sure these would have come through about six months ago. Because there was a whole like little fanfare on internet forums where all the golf geeks hang out about McGregor being back. I, I used to have a set of McGregors when I was a kid and they had like a diamond pattern down the side and they were unreal. Obviously they were blades. These are a little bit more chunky because McGregor, I'm not sure if it's ever went away, but it just started doing like box sets and horrible clubs that were not befitting a manufacturer of its history. These look pretty good actually. A forge iron, not a blade. It seems like they might be a bit of a semi cavity behind there as well. Interested to test those out and give them a hit. I've got a feeling as well that even though these look really nice, they're actually quite cheap. I'll throw up the price here. Oh, it's not even salad tape, it's spello tape. I'm never gonna get it off. Never gonna get it off. Never gonna tear it down. Never gonna run around and fat you. Hey, listen, I like attention to detail, but someone has put salad tape. Maybe this is why when the original box come through, maybe I pulled one of these out and just thought, you know what, this ain't worth it. Hey, worth it. Nothing is worth this. It was Tuesday when we started filming this video. It's now 2028. Tacomo 301CB. I believe that stands for cavity pack. <laughs> it's not my first word yet. Oh, it's all got plastic in my teeth. But these are a forged cavity. And I have to be honest, I am a fan of Tacoma wines. Like it's a direct to consumer brand and the quality of the clubs has always been really, really good at a cheaper rate. These ones, they look, again, just, one of the things I really like about Tacoma is if you have a look at this, like if I was to take out the Tacoma logo and if I was to stick like a tailor-made logo there, would you, would you question it? Now, this is something I don't actually test too much of and I think I need to remedy that this year. These are the tailor-made QI irons. So whenever a club manufacturer brings out a new driver, so tailor-made QI in this example, they often bring out a complementary iron set. Every now and again, I think it's a bit pointless. It's kind of like just bringing out an iron set for the sake of it. But, but I think I need to give them a little bit more care, due and attention. These are very much just a big cavity, someone who's struggling to strike the ball type of iron. 
But I think this year, such with um, Callaway, for example, with TaylorMade and a few other manufacturers, I'm going to give these irons a little bit more of their due in the test. Right, we have a plethora of Wilson irons, including the D9 Forge. Now, from my admittedly sketchy memory, uh, which has been battered by many a night out in Manchester, I've always remembered the D range from Wilson being quite chunky, quite uh, cavity back driven. Well, these, these are like speed slots kind of in the sole where they scoop out a little bit of the face to make it, uh, behind the face to make it a little bit springier. But these are a forged, not exactly muscle back, but they're definitely a slimmer design. And I've also got the staff model forged as well here where they've been, oh, see how they've changed the staff model logo, made it a little bit more minimalist. Yeah, so if you see another Wilson gearhead from across the course and they've not got WS on there, I mean, oh, yeah, you've all got one of the new irons. I don't know if that happens or not. There's more, there's more. Is a staff model blade and it's a new version of a staff model blade. I am actually genuinely very, very excited. So every like two to three, maybe even four years, Wilson bring out a new staff model of blade. This looks art deco. It looks old school. It looks beautiful. It's got a little bit of detailing of milling around the back. It is thin enough to have a shave, spread butter on your toast and attack a medieval shield wall. This is, Beautiful. Right, okay, let's go for the irons. There's a par three course in here, but it's more kind of geared towards the longer holes, as you see, and what we've played it. Baron Boulders Executive. I really, really hope that this course exists in reality because it looks sick. Oh, you know what? These still feel absolutely wonderful. Oh, just, just magnificent. First swing away, middle contact, a little bit just off the side of the green. I'm just gonna do a no look chipping. It's not a problem, easy as that. Oh, I lost my call. As soon as, you had, as soon as you had that reaction, I lost it. Oh, so annoying. So Wilson Irons, like within the last, I'd probably say maybe four or five years have really made a bit more of a resurgence from what they used to be. I think they were regarded in some circles, if not a bit of a joke, certainly a fallen giant. You know, we're talking about the most winningest major iron in history here. It's just an absolute pleasure to be in the company of these clubs today. Ah. I just love, I love how they look and I love what they, what they represent. That's such a stupid thing to say, but I kind of feel like having these clubs in your bag is a statement that like, you know, quality. You don't have to be from these like major players in the manufacturers at this moment in time. You can have a bit of heritage. You can have a bit of class. It's another 200 yards and I've got the same club in my hands and I'm thinking, hole in one, down to the pub. Oof couple of Guinnesses into town. Thank you, Wilson staff. This is gonna be just the best night ever. Thanks for coming. I'll see you soon. <sighs> Weren't bad though. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. So let's face it with the irons, nothing else really matters here apart from the frostbite inducing staff model blade from Wilson. Now, I actually, over the last like 12 months, there's been a bit of a renaissance within my own mind about PHA. I actually think they've been producing some really nice stuff. I'm not 100% sure on this Black Ops gear. It's really shiny. And I'm kind of thinking, like, if you were conducting a Black Ops operation, the last thing you want to be is shiny. Like, it needs to be matte black. You need to be blending in to the darkness. You need to be enveloped by the night as you sneak up on the enemy base. If that was glinting off you in the moonlight, you'd be sniped. It'd be hard there. 
Black Ops mission over. However, the normal 03115G do quite like, and also this head cover is unusually soft leather. Have some. <laughs> They're actually quite soft as well. Maybe I'm just, maybe I've just got softer hands. Now these are very nicely shafted. Haywood, um, um they um, so haywood are another direct to consumer company and they have been making some re again really good stuff over the last few years which i've enjoyed uh, it looks actually a lot better behind the ball than it does with that wrapper on surprisingly but again not keen on that logo that looks like a font you'd use if you're advertising like outdoor furniture okay as you may be able to tell i have a bouquet of qi 10s from Taylor made now, I actually really, really, really like the look of these QI10s behind the ball. So I tested these out originally, God, when was it? Kind of late last year when I went out to TaylorMade just to see the embargo products so we could start thinking about what the videos we could make around them. And the Fairway Woods, when I was hitting them, when I was looking at them behind the ball, they look really, really good. There's one I'm planning to do with the build my bag videos this year is have like a, is have a, a bag of clubs that I'm gonna regularly use, but it's also like building a bit of an arsenal. So I think by the end of this series, I'm gonna have about 17, 18 clubs. Now, obviously I can only have 14 to go in the bag at any one time, but this tour three wood, when I was testing this originally down at Taylor Made, I'm not even joking. I was carrying it almost like 300 yards which is a ridiculous distance for a three wood. But let's say I'm gonna go somewhere which has really tight fairways and I wanna try and be a little bit safe. Maybe this could go in the bag and then I could whack like a five wood in today, for example. So I'm just trying to think about it a little bit more linear this year. However, I think we should give these a whack and actually show you what I'm on about. Okay, for fairway woods, let's go somewhere local and let's go somewhere very, very tight. Of course, which I found so hard so often. Royal Rhythm in St. Anne's. So this was the absolute missile launcher that I was testing when I was first having a look at these clubs. It, it was basically, it was going too far. It was going too far and I'm not kind of dressing this up, I'm not trying to be stupid and people might be like, well, you know, I'll wait my three wood further. Honestly, this was so low spinning. This was as low as spinning as some of the drivers I've been testing out this year. Go on then. Fla, fla, fla. See, that's what I mean. So that's 260 yards carry through the air, which I can do with the three wood. But considering my swing speed there was about poof, 20 miles an hour, that is pretty impressive. Fortunately, I'm 200 yards away, which means I can just pull out my trusty little QI10 Max 4 hybrid, take a little old man swing at it. Just oh, dab it up there. God, it's just the future. I don't think I'm gonna be able to hit hybrid. Out. Oh no, I missed it. So Haywood, uh, I, I'm really sorry, that logo. That's pretty uncool. Those tailor-made, I don't really think of tailor-made as being that cool of a golf company. I don't know why, I like their products, but I think these clubs do look cool, especially the LS version with that like weight track, which kind of moves into the center of the club and does like nice things. It's not quite ice cold, but yeah. It's like a bag of peas. Like when you got it out, it's about half an hour out. It's not freezing, it's just like, it's, it's cool. Right, we've got an anomaly. Yeah. Right, we have an anomaly. We have a fly in the oil. Soup? Wine? Ointment? This is a tailor-made Stealth 2 HD. So this is kind of designed for people who want a little bit more draw bias on their drivers. Now, in the driver section of this video, I've actually only got two drivers that haven't been unboxed because quite frankly, when drivers come through, I know the size of the box, I rip it apart and I hit away with gusto. For whatever reason, this Stealth 2 HD with a stiff shaft, you know, Fujikora 60X, 90 degree, this has escaped my notice. So I think it would be pretty rude of us not to throw this in with the giveaway. So we have Indie Golf Wedges, we have Sub 70 Irons with our logo on it, and now we have a Stealth 2 Driver HD. I think that's a pretty good haul. 
that is pretty decent. So remember, subscribe, like the video, and get down into those comments below. Right, well, it's coming with a Ventus TR shaft 6X, so this is my shaft. So I think we'll be whacking away with whatever's in here. I'm pretty sure in saying it's Haywood. Now, this is what I mean. Look at the logo on the head cover. Look how cool and stylized that looks. That's nice. That's nice. If the if that different logo, if that patio furniture logo is on the bottom of this driver, I'm going to be really annoyed. Listen, I, I know, I know practically nothing about branding, but I know that that logo on that club head would be sick. It would make, it means, it makes no difference. As the Lord is my witness as I'm here on my knees, it makes no difference to the actual performance of the club, but it just makes you more excited about it. You know what I mean? If I bought a jacuzzi, I'd be excited. If I bought the turbo jet bum massage in jacuzzi, I'd be more excited. Okay, let's give this Haywood a bit of a go. So the Haywood's following a similar pattern to a lot of the other kind of major manufacturers, really. So they've got a titanium club head, and then they've whacked a bit of carbon on the top for weight savings. If this is a case of being a bit more, we're just going to copy what everyone else is doing and see what happens, I'll have to wait and see. But it looks behind the ball really nice. It sits pretty solid. And apart from like the logo on the back, I just think it looks really good. It actually feels really solid um, when you strike it. It's definitely not going to be quite as forgiving as some of the other models out on the market. I could kind of feel it twisting, but I actually get it back online pretty well. <laughs> ah, that's going to be pretty big. That's another 315 yards. 2-2 spin, pretty much bang on where I want it to be. Club head speed up around 120. Ball speed's going to be 168. I should stick some dots on here, really, but... All right, last one. Why did I have to end on that one? Ah. See, if I made that one, I'd be uncomfortable saying, yeah, great driver. No need to continue further testing. So unfortunately, we're going to stick Haywood in the Uncool, just again, because of that logo. But here is the completed ball. That was good fun. Right, guys, thank you for watching. It's good to get all these clubs out and give them a test. Continue to watch videos here on the Peter Finch Golf Channel by checking these videos out here. And please remember to enter the giveaway. We have only a few weeks from today's date, the video release date, to enter, and then it will close. Shut. Be gone forever.